listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Home and Finance Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today brought to you by the Siegel Lending Team. It's an interesting time of the month, interesting time of the year. So I thought I would share this just as a prelude uh, because I didn't want to spend a lot of time on any of our sponsored segments this morning just because we're going to talk most of this entire segment is devoted to the upcoming elections. But I do want you to know that now is a great time. If you have been contemplating refinancing, restructuring your home loans, now is the time to do it. If you get the paperwork in by the end of this week, The likelihood is your first payment will not be until the beginning of next year. Nice little gift there from the Siegel Lending Team. If you're thinking about it, don't wait too long. Just a personal opinion based on education. I anticipate we will see a rate drop the end of this week and a rate increase the middle of next week. We'll see if I'm right. This is recorded, so you will know that. So at this time of year, I like to go through the ballot measures and just share what it, where are the ballot measures, where, what are the candidates saying, other than the fact that we know that, what was it, four years ago, five years ago, that our esteemed governor made the comment, that I haven't found the clip, I'd love to be able to find this clip, that basically my paraphrasing, and I'm not going to tell you this on every item, you know the entire segment is my opinion. So... Just starting right there so you have a foundation. That paraphrasing this, the governor basically said, say whatever you need to to get into office and then do whatever you want to after you're there. Now, when somebody comes up and starts off, at least he was honest. He basically said, don't listen to what I tell you. I'm going to do what I want anyway. Don't believe me. So I didn't uh, So I didn't and didn't vote for him. But that's just my personal opinion. So Here's where I start. I've got this whole stack of mail. You've probably been getting tons and tons of mail lately. And I get this whole stack of mail, and I get a new half a dozen more pieces every single day. And they've all got these real bright headlines, and they've got these nice pictures on there. And sometimes you wonder about the pictures, of how much Photoshop was done, or were they taken when the candidate or the issue 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you wonder. But well, what do I do? I Basically, the first thing I do is I go to the fine print. And I'm not big on fine print, but I go and I look at the fine print on the ad and I say, okay, who paid for it? And then you wonder, am I in, a, in agreement with what the, the person that paid for the ad is all about or the organization that, that paid for the ad is all about? And it becomes a much easier way. So you get rid of all of the fluff on the ads. And you start saying, okay, do I agree? Here's an easy one. I look at, at Proposition 1. I have, I will get into it in detail. You may not have even started looking at it. I looked at Proposition 1. It's being promoted by Governor Brown, Senator Feinstein, Senator Boxer, and who, who knows who else is promoting it. Well, I'm not sure I've ever agreed with anything politically that Senator Boxer had to say. So if I've never agreed with her, do I think that I'm going to start agreeing now? Eh, Probably not. So I'm going to look real close to see. I'm going to be leaning toward a no on that because I don't agree with their perspectives. Got another one in front of me. It says endorsed by, and here's another one that doesn't really mean a whole lot when I say endorsed by because I want to know who paid for it, not who's endorsing it. Anaheim police means it's a good one in my opinion. Anaheim firefighters. Chamber of Commerce, I've got their whole voter's guide in front of me. Do I agree with everything, even on the Chamber of Commerce voter guide? Absolutely not. Very few of them do I ever agree with everything. But there's, there's the way you want to start, in my opinion, whenever you're looking at these things, is look at who's paying for it. If it's a group that, that you don't agree with, move on and, and just understand that it's probably, you know, if something's promoted or, or sponsored, again, I would say if it's sponsored by the Jarvis Group, 
Prop 13 group. More often than not, I'm going to be inclined to be pro or, or in accordance with what they've got to say. Does that mean always? Absolutely no. It does not mean always. But that's just one issue that you can look at. I look at also, you have to look at these crazy issues that where I guess I learned a new terminology as I was preparing for this segment is it's a, a veto. Are you going to support a veto? And that's a fancy way of saying no means yes, yes means no. So that, that came out when I was just doing some research on Proposition 48. It's a veto referendum. So understand that new terminology. If it, Maybe it's not even new to you. So here we go. Let's look at, we'll look at the easy, one of the easy ones. We'll talk about the, the uh, waste of a vote for somebody like me. The state of California governor's race. Unfortunately, Neil Kashkari has absolutely no chance of winning. I will still cast a vote there because it's the opposite effect for me. I look at this one as an opposite effect. Generally, the rich and famous is going to be the Republican. The working group, supposedly, is the Democrat. In this particular situation, the rich and famous, the golden spoon goes to Jerry Brown, the working candidate, Neil Kashkari. Mr. Kashkari went and proved that he wants to know about exactly how the people are living. While the governor was in Cabo San Lucas a couple of months ago, the challenger, Mr. Kashkari, was living in, I think it was in Fresno, where he went on a $40 budget to see if he could survive for a week on $40 and what it might feel like. Great marketing ploy. The only thing that he did differently than the average person that might be unemployed or without resources is he did have a camera crew with him, but he didn't go and do any of the, um, he didn't take advantage, no credit cards, no security blanket, lived on a park bench. Give him a great idea of what that's all about, what it's like not living at some fancy hotel in Cabo San Lucas. He also seems to have the better guide, in my opinion, on uh, on the the issues of creating jobs, budget items. You know, when we look at at the governor, again, a misleading issue. Look at we'll, we'll switch over and, and and just chat a little bit about Proposition One. And I'm not going to do the same thing that the media is doing because of the governor's thirty million dollar to six hundred thousand dollar advantage over Mr. Cash Carey. We're not going to put the um, Measure 1 and Measure 2 together. They are completely separate. Now, think about this. Measure 1, a bond measure, another bond measure for water funding. And they try and scare us because we know that there's a drought in California. And they say throwing another $7.5 billion dollars Don't forget about the interest on it that's going to take this to a $14 billion spending spree for Sacramento. But $14 billion to solve a water problem that we've tried over and over again, but there's nothing in the measure that legitimately gives us what they're going to do with the money. So per per the normal Sacramento way or political way, Give us $14 billion, and then we'll figure it out. Really? If you went to your bank as a business person and said, give me a million-dollar line of credit, and I'll figure out what I want to do with it, do you think they're going to give it to you? If you go to a lender with your, on your, to buy a house and say, give me a million-dollar loan, and I'll tell you later how I spent it, are they going to do it? Well, measure one, that's what they're saying. And thus, I've uh, marked my ballot as a no for that one. Number two, that one is another issue, an interesting issue, and I've gone back and forth on that one. That is a state budget stabilization account. Now, let's think about state budget stabilization account. What are they doing with that money? Well, they already have the budget stabilization account. It's 5% already of the budget is supposed to be going into a stabilization account. Why do they now think that they need to go to 10%? If our economy is doing better, that percentage is going to be increasing. 
So let's think about that one. Why do we keep? Why do they? Why do they put them together? Then they then they come out with this misleading ads. Watch the ads on TV. This drives me nuts. What are they saying in the ads on television? If you don't vote for this, it's going to be against law enforcement and firefighters. Really? Do you really believe that they're going to cut the budget and you've got a big wildfire and we don't have this stabilization and they're going to cut the budget on, and they're not going to go and fight the fire? You know better than that. Not a chance. So that's, they're, they're misleading us. So when you go into it and you look at it and say, if they're going to mislead me to get me to vote for it, once they've got the money, are they going to be honest? Yeah, it becomes a little bit more challenging. So there's another one that uh, this year, sometime, now I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to share this with you because we have heard this coming out of the politicians in Washington. No is a good word. In many, many instances, no is a, heck, sometimes, just from a parenting standpoint, think about this one, no might even be a complete sentence. Think about that. So on both issues, I'm looking at a no vote on Proposition 1, Proposition 2 is a no vote. Probably won't win on either of those. Governor's race, Neil Kashkari is where we've left off there. We're going to continue this conversation tomorrow. You are listening to Ron Siegel, Home and Finance Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, more discussions on caring for our loved ones, especially at this all-important holiday time of the year. you got to make memories. That's it. A friend of mine wrote a book about that, Making Memories, and how to get a credit card with bad credit, all that and more. Don't forget, you can listen to us anytime at the archives, Ron Siegel Radio. Join the Facebook page, Ron Siegel Radio, there as well. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few.